Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. yes. All right, all right, all right. We're going to the book of Acts, chapter number two. Verse number 38. And verse 39. When you find it, shout amen. amen. I know most of you are looking at the screen. And we have come with technology where we can carry our Bibles and our phones and in our iPads. And I started out of the office today, and all I had was my iPad. And I went, hmm, I miss my Bible. I had one woman told me, she said, now, just because you're carrying that iPad now, don't leave your Bible. I said, woman, my Bible's in my iPad. I better hurry up and get started here. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now this is our message. Repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we do excellent in preaching that. But watch this, in living it, in going after it. But what I'm concerned about is... The generations after us. And those that are afar off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. My topic today is simply this. What starts here changes the world. Thank you Lord for this anointed word. For this anointed people. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Bless you. You may be seated. The words of Peter preaching that first apostolic message. Repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It was meant for that generation. And the next, and the next, and the next, all the way to us and those who come after us. We must preach repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But we've got to make sure our children and their children And those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's about changing the world. Somebody shout, changing the world. world. Yesterday I was at the University of Texas. It was the first time in my life that I've ever been to a high school or university or professional ball game. Of any kind. I've just never been. High school. University. Or professional. Never been. My son. Prevailed upon me. Bought the tickets. Told me he bought the tickets. Told me he bought them. Eight or nine months ago. Said daddy I spent my money. I said, it's a first. (laughs) 
He's on parking lot duty. I'm looking for a white shirt. Oh, that's David back there. And that's his, so he's on the parking lot. If I want him to know it, I wouldn't have told it. Y'all tell him. <laughs> so I went with him. And he told me afterwards, he said, Dad, I know the whole time you're here, you are into everything around you is for what you're going to preach. And I didn't deny it. I saw in how many places. I saw it on the video boards. I saw it on billboards. I saw it on signs all around the campus. I saw it on T-shirts that other people were wearing. It is their motto. What starts here changes the world. And I couldn't get away from it. In fact, I found myself, you know, sitting there on a bench with no back for four hours. <laughs> surrounded by people. I mean, people up and down. In and out. I'd have to stand up. I was on the aisle. I had to stand up. Let them in. Let them out. Here we go. Back and forth. Sometimes same people. Always people walking by me. And here comes a guy with a tray. And he's got, you know what he's got in there. And he's selling it. And the pastor come up in me. And I went, will you people sit down and be quiet while I'm preaching? And Hayden's going, oh, Dad, please. <laughs> but I couldn't escape. What starts here changes the world. I even told Cameron, we saw him, had him come sit by us. And I said, Cameron, you see that sign? Yes, sir. I said, I'm going to preach that. He said, I know. How many messages have you already got? He said, I see these people going in and out. And I see your head, your, your brain's just a going. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. But I thought, with Jesus Christ, what started with him changed the world. And... I had something else to preach today, but I could not get that out of my mind. So I didn't go to bed till 3 this morning. I got home around 10 o'clock last night, but I could not escape this. And I kept saying, you know, I'm going to do something. Lord, help me. I want to preach that so bad. If you'll let me, I'm going to. And it feels good in the Holy Ghost. How do you go about changing the world. How do you affect all nations? How do you take a gospel from a baby in a manger and 33 years later you have a cross and an empty tomb and a few weeks later you have an upper room and a day of Pentecost, and 3,000 filled. I said, and a few weeks later, it's 5,000. And before long, it's multitudes. How do you do it? How do you change the world? You start with one molecule. You start with one word. You start with one stroke of a brush, and that brush is called purpose. You get one purpose. Hey, what starts here changes the world. You got to get up every day with that wide-eyed eagerness for learning. You got to have a curiosity to discover your potential and a responsibility to explore your limits in Jesus Christ. Uh, what starts here changes the world. Uh, it's hard to describe the heart 
of this church. It's diverse. It is created. But it's easy for me to show you the soul of Dallas First Church. Our soul is we're not here to be served. But we are here to serve others. Hey, you're going to change the world. You can't come in here saying, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. But you've got to say, I've come in here to serve somebody else. I've come in here to give. Jesus showed us when he said, if I lay down my life, I can pick it up again. I'm preaching to somebody in here. Hey, quit coming and saying, give me, but lay down your life in ministry to give to the kingdom of God and you watch what happens. What starts here What starts here? What starts here? Changes the world. Hallelujah. We serve a world that is big and diverse. That's why Dallas First Church, we must be single-minded in our purpose to grow, to transform uh, to be thinkers and dreamers and leaders of today and tomorrow to affect our world for Jesus Christ. Somebody shout yes. yes. Come on. It's not enough to just come, but we've got to be willing to give, to serve. I'm not here, preacher, for you to preach me happy. I'm not here preacher for you to give me give me give me I'm not here for you to pat me on the back I'm not here for you to prop me up but I've come to the house of God today because I'm going to serve God I'm going to serve others I want to give my life for others somebody shout yes hallelujah that's why we need more learning that's why you can't get up every day and say, okay, I, I got it made. No, you ought to get up every day and say, I'm going to learn something about Jesus that I didn't know yesterday. I want to get up today and I'm going to learn how to do my ministry better. I'm going to learn how. I love it when people text me good things and they say, Pastor, I was thinking about this. William Brewer just did it yesterday. A message. I guess he's working on it. And I went, good God. God of glory. Hey, hey, I'm going to preach that. But what are you learning? What are you doing with your opportunities to serve God? What are you discovering about yourself and about the Word of God? What starts here can change the world. It's up to us. It's in our life. We need to give life to our ideas. Come on, what are you breeding in your life? What are you causing to happen in your life? What are you bringing uh, to your ideas? Uh, we, Dallas First Church needs to be a network uh, for entrepreneurs uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, we need some pioneers uh, that will make up in our mind. We're going to break barriers. Uh, we're going to tear down. Come on now, this church. Are y'all hearing me? The most racial divided hour of any week is at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Because the strong majority of churches are one race churches. I know I've studied it, but I want a church that has black people, that has brown people, that has red people, that has tan people, that has yellow people, that has white people. I want 
Hey, hey, I want all nationalities. The world has come to Dallas. We ought to, well, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't near with me like you should. We shouldn't be sitting there while I'm preaching. What Dallas needs is an aggravation in the Holy Ghost that'll make us stir up our business and say we got to find the lost. No matter who it is. Some of shout, yeah. yeah. Some of you white people ought to be taking some black people to lunch today. Some of you black people ought to be taking some white people to lunch today. Boy, y'all are, I'm getting some crazy looks now. Come on, if you don't have a brown friend, if you don't have a black friend, shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. Somebody shout, yeah! My God, I'm not gonna have an all nation Sunday and have a church that, oh, we're just a little old white church. No, we're not. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. Woo. Caitlin and Michael, y'all stand up. That's a brown and a white. And I married them. Y'all hurry up and bring us one of them. And they're going, no, 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 no. Woo! Boy, they're going to sit down on me now. Is Kim and Dennis in here? There's Dennis, and she's in the kitchen. Dennis, quit working her so hard. Bo and Glenda, there y'all are. Stand up right there. This is Kim's mom and daddy. Now you see how white they are? Kim came from them. Do y'all see Dennis back there? Does he look like them? But I married them. Come on, somebody. Hey, there's room at the cross for every nationality. There's room at the cross. Somebody shout yes. Look right down here on the front row. I married y'all. Was that April? Woo, that was at my house. Look at y'all. See, y'all started that back there. Brother Mike and Sister Cynthia. Look at y'all. Man. That's a black and a white. Y'all gonna? Oh, they're saying no. Huh? Come on, somebody. What are, what are you preaching, preacher? I'm telling you right now. We got to find the black. We got to find the brown. We got to find the white. We got, we, we need Asian. We need everybody. Somebody shout yes. Woo. I'm telling you, that's our purpose. It's to reach. So we've got to have the thinking and the uh, entrepreneurs and the pioneers. Our sole purpose is to help people find their purpose in Jesus Christ. And it's whosoever will. This church is across the globe in places far away and even near. In Ghana, watching us today, the Yates family, they'll be returning in December, but they are there, and they're worshiping with us today, but they are ministering in Ghana. They're in orphanages. They're in churches. They're on the streets. They're with youth 
and all. It's across the globe. Come on. Our language should be a language that unites. Why? What starts here changes the world. Uh, hallelujah. We ought to inspire. It's all in these words I speak. Uh, what starts here changes the world. It ought to be our rally cry. It, hey, are you a thinker? Most of y'all sitting out there. Uh, did y'all get a good close up of my face? Come on, I'm tired of Washington doing our thinking. I'm tired of the Democrats and the Republicans doing our thinking. I'm tired of just getting in lockstep and whatever. Come on, come on. I'll tell you who to vote for. Vote Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying you better think. Uh, whatever things are pure and holy and of good report, that's what we ought to be thinking on. But you ought to be thinking, how can I do ministry? How can I reach somebody? How can I serve somebody? How can I help somebody? How can I be involved in ministry? Hey, am I doing all right? Is this all right? Come on. We need something that will sum up the passions for creativity and the pursuit of of discovery in the church. And that ought to be here. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling you right now. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if these Sundays while I'm gone, if y'all filled this church house up and filled every seat. I told somebody this week, I was at a board meeting, and I was so bored. I was numb on one end and dumb on the other. I got so sick. I, I said, my God, can we talk about revival? Can we talk about growth? Can we talk about filling the church? I said, all we've done is talk about maintenance this and maintenance that. All we've talked about, and man, I got them going. We got fired up, and we started talking about how we need to increase every church. And I started giving them ideas, and they started coming out. I went, good God of glory. So now I'm looking at empty chairs out here. We ought to, mm, you know what, what I'm going to do? When I get back, I, I'm going to start a fill a chair campaign. And we're, we're going to start filling this building up. I want to see that water baptism on tank. I mean, where we have to put, maybe bring in two more. Hallelujah. And have portable ones over here because we're baptizing so many. I need more Bible studies. I need more people discovering who they are and what they are. Somebody shout yes. Come on. I'm talking about your potential. Boy, I got so much more here. I got to preach. Come on. I need a rally cry. I need some thinkers. I need some doers. Somebody shout, let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. I want you to watch this. If I could have 500 that would dare to believe with me. Because that paragon of... Information called askme.com or just simply ask.com says that the average American will meet 10,000 people in their lifetime. Now, that's just the average. Some of y'all above average. You eat meat more than that. Some of you, well, no, we're all at least average in here. Are y'all hearing me? But it says... They meet on the average of 10,000 people in their lifetime. That's a lot of people. Is this mic going out? 
Somebody bring me another one. Lord, have mercy. I ain't going to let that. Somebody shout. Yeah. Oh, Lord, where's that mic been hiding? We got to get this mic to match this one. Ooh. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. I wonder what would happen if we could get 500 people that would influence 10,000 people in their lifetime for Jesus Christ. Hello? If we would not be intimidated and be quiet, I wonder what would happen if in every conversation we throw Jesus in there. If in every conversation, whoever we're with, we say, man, I'm a one God. I was a... Y'all hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. What could we do? What would happen? You say it's hard to change the lives of 10 people. Instead of going for 10,000, let's bring it down to 10. What if you could just change 10? You say, oh, that's hard. Come on. That's why you're thinking that way. And you're not doing it. Because you're negative. Come on. Why don't we make up in our mind, in the next three weeks, I'm going to affect 10 people for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. In the next three weeks, hallelujah, at least 10. I'm going to talk to that. That's, that's only 3.333 a week. Seven days. When you get to three, I don't know how you're going to divide that one into 3.333. But you, you'll come up with it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm going to stay right here till, till you get with me. Come on. We, we got to do it. Uh, you, you say, I, I don't know how that can happen. I'll tell you right now. Because somebody touched somebody. Somebody came to God. Come on. My mama was touched by her granny. And I got a picture for the first time in my life. It's on my phone. I wish I thought about it. I'd put it up on the screen. Of my great granny. She took my mama to church. And there was a revival. And the next week, my mama took the man who became my daddy to church. Come on. A granny touched her granddaughter. The granddaughter touched the man who had become her husband. And they touched me. And I'm touching you. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. Who are you touching? Who are you bringing in? Who are you reaching for? Hallelujah. Somebody touched Sakura. And Sakura went after David. And David and Sakura, I, I look around here today, I see a lot of people because of them in this church today. I wonder who you have in this church. Who have you brought? I look back. And I see, don't tell me you're too old. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. Brother Lyford, I see you and Sister Lyford. Y'all got a friend with you today. I love it. They always, there's somebody they're bringing to church. They've got Ahmet in Turkey. Touching souls. Because what starts here changes the world. What started with the Bible study is here is now reaching Turkey. What started as a young girl coming to God. There's now Megan has souls in Austria and also in Switzerland. The Yates have so Come on. What starts here changes the world. Come on, somebody shout yes. yes. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Mm, don't look at your watch. Mm, they went to overtime in some ball games yesterday, I guarantee you, and people wasn't going. Y'all get up now. Come on, hurry this thing up now. Boy, they go to extra innings, uh, and they're going, whoa, come on. That's when it really gets started. Hallelujah. Don't get me started. Here we go. Generations are saved by one decision, by one person. But changing the world can happen anywhere by anyone uh, that makes up in their mind. Uh, we can. We can. What will your world look like after you've changed it? That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I'm looking right now at uh, the uh, uh, African Apostolic Immigrant Church. It's Dallas First African or it's Apostolic African Immigrant Church, yeah. and it's Kenny Bowen and Eileen Bowen, but because of them, hallelujah, what starts here changes the world. They have people in this church right now because they're changing the world. I, I'm preaching to somebody. There's, hey, 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 with young people. Are y'all hearing me? Our youth group. With Brother Andrew Lucas, uh, they're touching lives. Uh, come here, Tyler, Oliver, where are you? There he is. Hallelujah. The three amigos, Tyler, Cameron, and Dalton, and all three of them are changing the world. Uh, Dalton is studying to be a preacher. Cameron is studying to be business uh, in a business world. But he told me, I feel a calling for ministry. Tyler is already wrapped up, uh, tied up, uh, tangled up uh, in Dallas First Church Ministries. Uh, I'm grateful. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you. Hey, what starts here is changing the world. It's changing the world. He's changing his world. Hey, are you changing your world? What are you doing with your world? What are you doing with your world? Somebody shout yes. yes. Woo, man. Hallelujah. Mm. Come on. I don't mean to bring any more suffering, but I want you to hear me. Ty Marlin has affected his world. Uh, and what starts here changes the world. Uh, because y'all gave yourself to Jesus Christ. Uh, you Boys are following you, uh, and I'm preaching. Ty is changing his world. Uh, those he's dead, uh, he yet speaketh. Uh, I'm preaching to somebody. I had a nephew died 16, uh, but he's affected. I wonder how many young people are stirred up around our world because of Ty Marlin. Every time I saw it yesterday, somebody put it on an uh, in Instagram. There goes that rocket, and they're saying, it, I can't believe it, but we're loving like Ty. I'm preaching to somebody. What starts here, it was a casket. It was a funeral, but what starts here changes the world. I, I'm preaching to somebody right now. What are you doing to change your world? What are you doing? I, you're going to sit down. You're going to back up. You're going to backslide. You're going to walk away from God. You better make up in your mind. I'm going to change my world. I'm going to change my world. What happens here changes the world. Come on. Somebody shout yes. yes. Woo. James, where are you? There, there you are. Was it the Prietos that brought you to church? And they brought Nina. And they're changing the world. Look at the effect that they're having. Last night. He was leading our praise team, ministering up in Corinth. And I'm driving home, and the pastor texted me and said, DFC tore it up at Victory Church tonight. Uh, hallelujah. They're changing the world. But somebody brought kids to church. Uh, don't tell me bringing kids to church uh, is not going to change 
our world. Uh, come on, outreach team. Come on, outreach team. Reach them, reach them, reach them. What starts here changes the world. What starts here changes the world. What starts here changes the world. I want it in your mind. I want it. I want you to see it. Hey, what am I doing to change my world? What am I doing with my kids? What am I doing with my friends? What am I doing with those around me that I come in contact with? Uh, what starts here? Somebody shout, here. here. What do you mean here? I'm talking about right where you are. I'm talking about you. It was in Port Arthur, Texas. They brought a little boy to church. I think it was grandparents. Am I right, bro? Grandparents were bringing you to church. Wow, I got it in my notes. I got it right. Brought him to church. Hallelujah. And what happened? He grew up. Never got away from it. Married in the church. Has kids in the church. Got into ministry in the church. Affecting kids. In the church. But now, it's not just in the church. Stand up, Brent. Marie Wilson. I want you to watch this. They're not just affecting kids in our church. But they're affecting kids across North Texas. And those kids, uh, some of them now, are in Bible college. Uh, and they're affecting their world. Uh, there will be missionaries because they were Bible quizzing. Hey, what starts here changes the world. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, I'm preaching to somebody. What are you doing with your world? Uh, it's here. It's here. It's here. Somebody shout here. Oh, I'm a nobody. Oh, I'll never be able to do what Brent does. Oh, I'll never be able to do what Brother... Gordon Winslow does. Oh, I could never be that. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to come down here where I can get underneath these lights and I can look y'all in the eye. I am challenging young men and young women to change their world. I, I'm telling you to change your high school, to change your junior high, to change your university. I'm not talking about the Heisman Trophy. I'm not talking about being the Nobel Prize winner. But I'm talking about when you stand before God Almighty and he calls your name, how many will rise up uh, to call you blessed? Uh, how many will rise up uh, and say, because of them, I'm in? Somebody shout yes. yes. Come on, Trevor. Don't you stoop to be a king. When you can change your world for God Almighty. Oh, I told you earlier, I, I thought I was going to be an attorney. I was on my way. But God got a hold of me. And I, I had to tell my daddy. And I knew he wanted me, or I thought, to be that attorney. But he said, son, you couldn't have pleased me more by being a preacher. And he said, don't you dare be just another preacher if you're going to be a preacher change your world i'm looking for some world changers i'm looking for world changers cynthia and marilyn that's what i'm talking about change your world natalie martinez and kimberly martinez change your world I, i'm preaching about our exchange ministry hallelujah we need young adults coming together for a common purpose we need young adults coming together and saying united we stand divided we fall we're going to change our world alex where are you stand up back there alex i remember when you were telling me how they got mad at you when you were out there witnessing at University of Texas at Arlington. You remember those days? Don't you change. Don't you back up. Change your world, son. Change your world. Don't stop now. Change your world. Joseph, stand up.
Come on, son. I remember when you were down here at the front. Now I'm having to find you in the back. You're not going to change your world acting that way. you got to get out. you got to forget about what anybody thinks, what anybody says. I'm going to change my world. Hey, 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 what starts here changes the world. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you. I'm reaching for you. Come on, young men. Change your world. Change your world. Change it for the house of God. Our message is repentance. Water baptism in Jesus' name. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. But it is to our children and their children and those that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. What are we doing with them? What are we doing with them? Abram and Naomi. No, Amy. I was looking for y'all. I just found you. Hallelujah. He, he's holding his baby. No, 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 Amy. Stand up. Hallelujah. Abram, if, if you can without waking her. But if you can't, don't. He's got that new. Look, look. Ex exchange ministry. All you that are out of high school, young adults, you need to be in that class. I'm telling you right now, there's no excuses. Don't you give me that excuse that you can't because this or that. You get your hide in that class. You get in there. Come on. Uh, hallelujah. What if that's how we dictated all of our ministries? We wouldn't have anything. Are y'all hearing me? I'm preaching. Change your world. Change those young adults. Come on, young adults. Get in there. Somebody shout yes. Am I fired up or what? Am I fired up? I'm talking about changing our world. Hallelujah. We need change for Spanish ministry. November what? November 17th. Spanish service next door. Saturday night. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody shout yeah. yeah. Come on. African. Dallas. First. Apostolic African Church. Hallelujah. Every Sunday morning. And then they have Bible studies. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, church? I'm talking about change your world. I walked through that door. Natalie was working the door. I walked by there and I stopped and turned around. And I went back to her. I said, Natalie, are you losing weight? She said, yes, sir, I am. Thanks for noticing. I said, great. That's good. She said, Pastor, I'm working out with Natalie Postis. Giving you some free pups, yes. And she said, it's just melting off. She's changing her world. So I told her, why are you changing that world? Change the other. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I got in late. Didn't go to bed till 3. Didn't see my wife. Till this morning, she hugged me and she said, huh, where's your belly going? I went, mm, I've been trying to get rid of that thing. Hallelujah. I got a ways to go, Donnie. Pray for me while I'm on my trip. <laughs> you might all text me some, because John's already come to me and said, Uncle Tom, I'm going to wake you up every morning and go to the gym. I went, oh, my God. I said, this is vacation, not work. <laughs> I'll, oh, I, I'm telling off on myself. Why couldn't I just left that part out of the message? <laughs> Natalie, y'all mess me up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Change your world. 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 Everybody here shout change. change. Shout it again. Change. Everybody here shout your. your. Everybody over here shout world. world. When I point at you, shout it. Well, y'all got to pick it up a little bit. Come on, heaven's taking notice. And heaven is saying, I'm going to empower them with Holy Ghost power. I'm going to show up in their lives. Holy Ghost is saying, I'm going to give them boldness. I'm going to walk in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hell's, 
hell is saying, I'm going to come after them with everything I can to get them to shut up, get them to sit down, get them to be ashamed, get them to go backwards. But I got news for hell. We ain't coming. We're not coming. We ain't going to hell. And we're going to get as many people as we can to go to heaven. Come on, somebody. Change your world. What starts here changes the world. So what you, the decision you make right now can change your world. The choice you make right now can change your world. In just a few moments, I'm going to invite you to come to the front of this church. When you come, don't stop in the middle of the aisles. Don't just come and stand. Let's go to the sides. Because there's many. And we, we need, I need everybody to change our world. To change our world. Come on, somebody. So our heads are bowed, now eyes are closed. You say, but how do I change my world? Well, repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll come out of those drugs. You'll come out of that alcohol. You'll come out of all that trouble. You'll come out of that lust. You'll come out of... And you'll be set free. You'll be delivered. There'll be the freedom of the Holy Ghost. There'll be the joy of God. And now all the rest of us need to change our life. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Uh, don't be intimidated. Invite people to church. Tell them to come. Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. We're going to change our world.